Okay, so now I explained you step by step how to get this volumetric flow rate equation uh, for a non-Newtonian fluid inside a capillary channel, which is having a radius of R. So then using the same equation, so then we can work out uh, the volumetric flow rate for the same uh, channel, but with a Newtonian fluid by simply substituting N equals one and K equals eta. So then we'll get the Poisson equation for a volumetric flow rate inside a capillary channel. And then this part is related to the geometry of the channel. You could see this is radius and this is the length of the channel. Okay, so let's see how we can uh, the, determine the same volumetric flow rate equation for a different type of channel geometry. Okay, then next consider a fluid flow inside a slot or slit channel. So this is the cross section of the channel. You could see it's a rectangular cross section with the width W and then the height H. Okay, before it was a capillary channel with a radius R, now we're going to look at how we work out the volumetric flow rate for a slit channel. So for this calculation also, the, the, the assumption that we made with the capillary flow is still applicable, incompressible flow, flow is isothermal, flow is laminar, no slip at the channel wall. Okay, so but apart from that, we need to have another assumptions to analyze this, uh, uh, the geometry properly. So that assumption is that the width of the channel should be uh, reasonably greater than height of the channel. Okay, so we have the fifth assumption here, that is the, uh, the width of the channel is uh, the, uh, relatively greater than the height of the channel. So here also, we, we can have these equations for the shear stress at the wall, and also the shear rate at the wall. So these also can be obtained based on the, uh, the Navier-Stokes equations for a slit channel. So again, as I said, you will be given these and then you don't need to uh, know how to get these ones, but you will have a document on Blackboard uh, to, to refer to how to get uh, these equations as well for a slit channel. Right, again, we're going to assume a non-Newtonian fluid flow behavior and then uh, we can have the, uh, the volumetric flow rate equation for a Newtonian fluid as well as we did before by substituting N equals one and K equals eta. Right, so this is the equation, simplified equations. I'll quickly show you how to get this uh, again, as I did before uh, for a capillary channel. Okay, here you have indicated all the information and related assumptions, uh, which I mentioned you before. And then now we have the equations for the shear stress and the shear rate inside a slit channel. So this is again, you can uh, uh, obtain from uh, the navier stokes equations. And then by assuming uh, non-Newtonian behavior, we start with the power law model, we substitute this term and the shear stress, uh, the shear rate term into this equation, and then we can get into this uh, equation. So after that, I wanted to get this k into this side, and then it is here, and then then I'm going to get one to the power n in the both side of the equation. So then uh, the at the same time, I just uh, the want to make this to be subject q to be the subject of the equation. So we'll end up with this this uh, this term. So we can start simplifying in the terms. And then uh, the, you will end up with this final uh, the step here. And then you will get this final equation for the volumetric flow rate. So which is N is the well flow index, K is the consistency index, delta P is the pressure difference, P1 minus P2. Uh, okay, L is the channel length. And then W is the, the width of the channel, H is the height of the channel. And N again is one over N plus two here. So this is uh, the volumetric flow rate equation for a non-Newtonian fluid inside a slit channel. And then if you want to have the, the, uh, the volumetric flow rate equation uh, for a Newtonian fluid inside the same channel, so what we could do, we can substitute N equals one and K is equal to eta. Okay, so then we'll end up with this equation uh, for the volumetric flow rate of a slit channel with a Newtonian fluid. Okay, then hope you have good understanding now to how to get uh, uh, the volumetric flow rate equation for a Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids inside a capillary channel and a slit channel. And here also, if you look at the sum parts are this part here, h to the power three w over twelve is a constant related to the geometry. Okay, so this uh, then, as you can understand, before also you had the same term here, delta P over L, and there was a geometry related constant. And for depending on the different channel geometry, so we'll have a different uh, the constant related to the channel geometry. So that is how it works. Okay, so then, uh
So now I explained how to get this equation and also this one when n is equals one, as I mentioned before, so this is the, uh, the geometry related constant. Therefore, you could assume that the format of uh, the, the volumetric flow rate equation would be uh, constant related to the geometry and the pressure difference over viscosity of the fluid. In the previous equation also, we had the same format and the, let's say if you have a different cross section, let's say it's uh, uh, the uh, triangular cross section, so we'll have a different constant here, but with the delta P over eta. Okay, so you have, uh, now you have good understanding about these things and uh, the, I'm not going to look at any other channels. So then uh, these are the two type of channels I would like you to have some understanding in this course unit under this lesson. Right, let's look at some brief information about the turbulent uh, flow behavior. Actually, we discussed this uh, at the beginning of the lecture also, but here I'm going to highlight some few points uh, very quickly. Right, so we have considered laminar flow behavior. Uh, so, uh, the, and also I explained your Reynolds number to quantify this laminar and transitional and uh, the turbulent flow behaviors, right? So then uh, for a, uh, a trouble-free smooth mold filling, a mostly in extrusion, we need a laminar flow. Okay, that is what we need for a smooth proper mold filling. Then if you look at the turbulent flow behavior, it could uh, cause to a uh, uh, very good mixing of the fluid. At the same time, it could introduce problems with the air bubbles creating some porosity. So this could be a problem mostly uh, when you process molten metals uh, and also low viscosity polymer monomers uh, or solutions. So therefore, in material processing, uh, the, we need both uh, flow behaviors actually, but we have to carefully decide when we have the smooth flow, when we have to have a turbulent flow behavior, right? So therefore, uh, the, as I mentioned, the turbulent flow is good in uh, maximizing the heat transfer. So uh, in heat transfer, so turbulent flow can increase the conductive heat transfer coefficient that we're going to look at in the next lesson. So therefore, uh, heat transfer cases, the turbulent flow is the most desirable flow behavior. As I mentioned before again, the Osborne Reynolds, uh, in Manchester, involved introducing a stream of colored water into clear water flowing through tubes or different diameters. And then he pioneered uh, the developing this Reynolds number, which is named after him. And then uh, the, uh, they, 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 he introduced the Reynolds number and uh, the, was a pioneering engineer who contributed to the development of uh, the fluid flow, fluid flow mechanics. So as I said, one of his apparatus used for this experiment uh, is available in George, uh, the big building foyer. And if you simply uh, the, uh, illustrate these behaviors, uh, the laminar flow is quite smooth and the turbulent flow is having some certain, uh, the soil mix in flow behavior as well. Okay, so here we are going to look at some critical Reynolds number, right? Critical Reynolds number, I'll explain what it is. So the Reynolds found that laminar flow turned into a turbulent uh, flow when the critical value of dimensionless quantity, so which is named after him, which is the Reynolds number, right? Okay, this is the Reynolds number that we learned before I explain you, it is unitless, Reynolds number is equal to velocity, that is the mean velocity, uh, density of the liquid and the diameter of the channel divided by the uh, viscosity of the uh, liquid, right? So then uh, the, for a given channel, okay, for a given channel, we have a constant diameter. Okay, so then given channel and a given fluid, let's say then we have constant diameter, constant density and uh, the constant viscosity, given that temperature is constant. So therefore the way we can change the flow, okay, so the, I mentioned you before, so by increasing the Reynolds number, we can make the flow to be turbulent and then at the same time, uh, so we can reduce the, uh, the speed to change the flow behavior. So therefore, so there should be a critical velocity for a given channel and a given material to change the flow behavior from laminar to turbulent or turbulent to laminar, right? So therefore that critical value or that certain, that value that we can change the flow behavior is known as the critical uh, the Reynolds number. So therefore we can uh, define the critical Reynolds number with a critical velocity. So velocity is the main parameter to change the flow behavior or to switch the flow behavior from turbulent to laminar or laminar to turbulent. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, both type of flows are required in different cases. 
So with molten metals with high density and low viscosity, it is really easy to exceed this critical velocity. So therefore, there will be a turbulence uh, inside when 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 metal metal processing. So the ping has to look at this problem actually how to overcome this problem. So therefore, uh, the uh, uh, in metals processing uh, which has very high uh, the uh, density and low viscosity, porosity is a common problem due to the uh, the turbulent flow behavior. But in polymer processing, uh, in my part of lecture, so then we need a smooth flow. But uh, the the normally uh, the polymer melts are having a low density and high viscosity. So therefore, they are, uh, they, are, they might not have the turbulent flow behavior quite frequently. So therefore, the flow is quite uh, the, the lamina. That is all I want to discuss in this lesson. So uh, the, uh, before moving into next lesson, I would like to give you a quick recap on the important points uh, that we discussed. Okay, this is a quick recap for the lesson number one, fluid flow behavior. In this lesson, we discuss uh, number of important uh, the points. The initially, we discussed different flow classifications. A steady flow, a uniform flow, non-uniform flow, then one-dimensional, two-dimensional likewise. And then we discuss laminar turbulent flow behaviors. And also we look at the, the Newtonian, non-Newtonian fluid flow behaviors. And then afterwards, so we got time-dependent, time-independent and viscoelastic fluid flow behaviors. Uh, quite a lot actually. Therefore, it is important that you understand those parameters to solve some questions and also to do some practical work and experimental work and also at eventually when you work at the uh, at the industry after the degree. So then after that uh, laminar and turbulent flows, we can use Reynolds number uh, to quantify the laminar and turbulent flow behavior, which was, uh, this was a non-dimensional number defined by Osborne Reynolds. And Reynolds number is equal to rho VD over mu. So I will discuss a while ago. So then we, it's better you remember this non-dimensional number and the terms here as well. So after that, we learn continuity equation. Okay, and uh, the, then also, uh, the Bernoulli equation as well. In the continuity equation, the main thing you have to remember that uh, uh, the, the mass flow rate should be a constant uh, throughout the flow. Okay, mass flow rate should be a constant. So therefore, based on that, we can work out uh, the rho V1, rho 1 V1 A1 and rho 2 V2 A2. So then we know for compressible fluids, we have to have these different terms, but for incompressible fluids, density remain constant. So then we could say rho 1 is equal to rho 2, and then we'll end up with uh, the, the V1, A1 is equal to V2, A2. So therefore, volumetric flow rate should be AV. And the velocity is inversely proportional to the, uh, the cross-sectional area of the channel geometry. After this one, we learned Bernoulli equations. And then we looked at the Newtonian and non-Newtonian behaviors. And also then we looked at the volumetric flow rate inside capillary and uh, the, the uh, slit channels. So these are the main things that we discussed. Uh, in this uh, the, the lesson number one fluid flow behavior lecture. Okay, so please, if you have any questions, please make sure to raise those questions during synchronous sessions. So I'm really happy to help you have any doubts. So then, so then we can look at how we can apply those theories to solve uh, the related problems uh, in this unit.